sa akin Tamang kabanaran ang kahihinan na natin Pagbukal sa iyong isipan, tagumpay na tatahakin Isa pangarap na lubot, tandas na iyong pagtutunguhan Pangangat na inaasam, di mapipigil ni Numan Maaabot lahat, lahat ng iyong inaasam Kasi bagan ng sagot, sa lahat ka man sa kayamanan Technology can make things easier, but it can also make things possible. More than one billion people have a disability around the world. And while some disabilities are visibly apparent, others are not. Today, many report experiencing mental health conditions for the first time. The truth is, most of us will experience disability at some point in our lives, temporarily or permanently. Still, people with disabilities face higher unemployment rates, more than twice that of people without. And only one in 10 have access to the assistive devices they need to be active in their communities. The COVID-19 pandemic has only exacerbated this disability divide, with many experiencing symptoms that are lasting for weeks or months after diagnosis. Here at Microsoft, we've been on a journey to design technology with and by people with disabilities. We're learning every day, and people with disabilities are leading the way. Office features now make it easier for millions to create and send accessible, inclusive communications. More opportunities for improving digital skills and learning are available than ever before. And people with disabilities are preparing for an increasingly digital job market. As the world changes, our approach to accessibility is changing too. That's why we're upping our ambition over the next five years. Not only do we want to scale accessible and affordable technology, we're investing in skilling opportunities and talent development and doubling down on our promise to build and model inclusive workplaces. But we can't close the disability divide alone. As communities around the world prepare for post-pandemic life, we want others to join this global cause to make society more inclusive. Disability is a strength, and society is stronger when it's accessible to everyone. And while technology can make things possible, people make things amazing.
To learn more, visit aka.ms slash accessibility commitment. The true purpose of education is to create possibility. It was a little hard for me. People laugh whenever I read sometimes. Well, they knew how to read, and I didn't. I will never be good at reading. I will probably be held back again. It highlights the words to know where I am. When it's reading, I see spaces between the words, and it's easier to focus on. The first time I actually could read that book, I was proud of myself. I was very proud of myself. Good job, Joey. When technology and education come together, possibility becomes reality. I want to read every book in here. Hi, I'm Mike. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how you can improve reading skills with Microsoft Learning Tools. To get started, go to office.com and sign into your Office 365 education account. Click on Word to open a Word document. And now go to the View tab and click on the Immersive Reader. You'll see all of the page is reducing distractions, and I can really focus on the text. When you press the play button, the Amazon rainforest, you hear the text read aloud, and you see the words highlighted, you can easily follow along. You can increase and decrease voice speed really easily. You can increase the font size. You can also increase the spacing, which is a proven technique to help reduce visual crowding. You also can click on a page color that gives better contrast and can make it easier to see the letters. Now you can turn the syllables on as well and break them down with a single click. I can highlight the different parts of speech like nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. Now reading rulers are something that teachers have used for a long time for focus. And with a single click here, I can turn on line focus and really give that extra focus for students. With the picture dictionary, I can click on a single word and see a picture of that and also play it back to have that multi-sensory processing, a great tool for reading comprehension. So learning tools are available in OneNote, Outlook, Office Lens, and Edge as part of Office 365 in Education, which is free for you teachers and students. Go check it out. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas.
Paminog ka sumanaman mig tukul to langit Woy mig tumpi to tano Kasublan maroson no kunog ko ilingan Kamig balin tutuan noy No sub-sub to ka namin gaynawa Woy mig punan to ka namin umul tumulo na anon na No mig pogpono sa init ampaw to ingod Sa ini kay kunto manaman amoy no ritipur santo langit Og sampit to maroson nun ngaran na Dumat to kay kon mo pansingan na Kakalayag ha tahun liyag Karang panayangan na pamulingan mandalingan woy tomo dumapad sublapad erit harikala namig bahayan nuto katongoda tapog nongnong tapog pataha ayog patanod tanod kanami tematolos nun tularo no nakawaglit get ampot kawihana ayog kasoloma duok opiana na woy katubungan na magbabayo sa ini ka ko din tugtubaro na igbohay kuro di ko ko ka magbabayo na mamin Toran manama no olog no gdayrayan. Naudz bilah min shaitan rajim. Bismillah rahman rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Ar rahman rahim. Malik yom din. Iya kan abu dua iya kan astain. Ihdin al salat al mustaqim. صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم اجمع شمل الأمات والنصارى والمسلمين في الفلبين وصلت مجتمعنا هذا بالسلم والأمن والتقدم في وطننا هذا آمين يا رب العالمين اللهم ارفع عنا البلاء والوباء والزلازل وسيء الأسقام وما ظهر منها وما بطن خاصة كوفيد 19 المنتشرة في العالم يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا أداب النار وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم آمين يا رب العالمين Almighty Father, Creator of Heaven and Earth We adore and worship your holy name Our healer, baptizer, savior and coming king We stand in awe to your every creation in land, seas, and air. We humble ourselves, asking for forgiveness for our trespasses. Purify us, cleanse us, make us worthy to call upon you. We thank you, God, for the salvation you freely gave through Jesus. Today, we call unto you to bless us and be a blessing to others. Empower our leaders, our teachers, give courage to the parents and inspiration to the young ones. May we always celebrate life and love. May we always acknowledge that without you, we are nothing. This we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow charity. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is error, the truth. Where there is doubt, the faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying to ourselves that we are born to eternal life. Amen.
Nicole Aredix once said, Inclusive educators believe in valuing student differences and supporting their learning needs to the greatest extent possible. Good morning to all our DepEd officials from central and field offices, instructional leaders, school heads, teachers, learners, parents, guardians, learning facilitators, and other stakeholders. Welcome to the fourth day of DepEd's Inclusion and Accessibility Week, an online information driver where we will listen to different invaluable topics on ensuring inclusive and accessible education through the use of digital technology for our learners in special circumstances. Today's event is made possible by the Department of Education through the Bureau of Learning Delivery Student Inclusion Division, together with Microsoft Philippines, with the special participation of Virtual Lahan, Line Learning and Development Solutions, Philippine Dyslexia Foundation, and University of the Philippines, Diliman College of Education. Joining us also this morning are our DepEd trained Filipino Sign Language interpreters, Mr. Agapito Abuda from Jose Rizal Elementary School, Division of Manila, National Capital Region, and Ms. Gladys May B. Cabitan from Region 4B, Mimaropa, Palitian Elementary School. We also have Ms. Celestina Omanga. We are sending our warm greetings and shout out to all our live viewers who are tuning with us right now via DepEd Philippines Facebook page. We want to make this experience unforgettable, so feel free to share all the latest happenings online by using our official hashtag, hashtag DepEd Inclusion and Accessibility. We have a great agenda today, so sit back, relax, and enjoy all the sessions we've prepared for you this morning. And to start off, to give his opening message, may I call on the Chief Education Program Specialist of the Bureau of Learning Delivery, Student Inclusion Division, DepEd Central Office, Dr. Jose Tuginayo Jr. Let us all give Dr. Tuginayo a virtual round of applause. Hi, good day to everyone. Let me welcome you to this online information drive or advocacy training in partnership with Microsoft Philippines regarding accessibility and inclusion of learners with disabilities in basic education. Thank you to our learners, parents, and teachers, and other participants nationwide for joining us in this platform to learn something on accessibility and inclusion of learners with disabilities in education. This topic is indeed very significant to all of us as we are trying to ensure that everyone in DepEd, especially to our learners, can access quality basic education through different modes or platforms or even technology. Thank you to Microsoft Philippines for the accessibility features of your Microsoft Teams that are learners with disabilities, parents, serving as facilitators during online learning, especially so that we are now pushing for hybrid or blended learning during this pandemic period. Hence, let's take this opportunity to relearn and learn and, and, and learn from this online information drive or, or advocacy. We are hopeful that after this one week activity in promoting inclusive education and accessibility to learners with disabilities, you are expected to maximize the accessibility features of the Microsoft Teams in navigating your learning in any dimension of your education. Inclusive education is a process to address and respond to the educational needs of all learners, regardless of disability, regardless of ethnicity, sex, age, religion, sexual orientation, or other protected characteristics. It responds to the diverse needs of all learners by increasing participation in learning cultures and communities and totally eradicating exclusion within and from education. 
it involves changes and modifications in content, approaches, structures, and strategies with a common vision which covers all children and youth of all ages, affirming the process of the Department of Education's conviction that its mandate and responsibility is to educate all children and youth without discrimination or favor. Inclusion of learners who are marginalized and disadvantaged, especially those with disabilities in every sector of our society, including education, is an important requirement in upholding human rights, sustainable development, and peace and security. This is the very essence of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development to ensure that no one is left behind. The commitment to realizing the rights of marginalized and disadvantaged learners is not only a matter of justice. It is an investment in a common future. And so we need to address accessibility and inclusion in the education sector. And this needs a systematic approach because when we talk about inclusion to education or inclusive education, this, not, this does not only refer to teachers, but everyone in the educational system and even beyond communities. The Microsoft Philippines commitment to provide support to making sure that an accessibility features of its Microsoft team will be provided for our learners with disability to participate actively in education. Systematic approach is looking at every dimension of education to ensure the provision of equitable and quality basic education to all. So let's take this opportunity to benefit from our experts as they share their knowledge and expertise on accessibility and inclusion. Let us also take this opportunity to maximize the benefits that we can draw from Microsoft Philippines through its commitment to ensure that accessibility features of its technology and inclusion happen. Again, good day and keep safe everyone. Thank you so much, Chief Tuginayo, for your message and for gracing this event. Let us now dive into our first topic, which focuses on understanding students' challenges in learning to read and write. This topic explains the common challenges in reading and writing that learners across K-12 ex levels experience in the virtual or actual classroom. This also illustrates and explains how the literacy process breaks down which hampers the academic performance of a child. Before we begin, let me introduce our speaker. Our resource speaker, who is also called as Teacher Maki, has worked with children and adults with dyslexia, ADHD, language disorders, and other learning conditions for 22 years, and is currently in the board of directors of the Philippine Dyslexia Foundation. Teacher Maki also helps establish support groups for parents, children, and families of children with learning disabilities to promote awareness and understanding of their needs. I won't let, let you wait any longer. Let us all welcome Ms. Maria Reina Makalinao Pante, Board of Director, Philippine Dyslexia Foundation. Let us give her a virtual round of applause. Hello, everyone. I'm Reina Macalino Pante, but I'm typically referred to as Teacher Mackie by my students, colleagues, and friends. Thank you for attending the webinar today. Working with children and adults with dyslexia for 22 years has helped me become more mindful of their areas of strengths and weaknesses in reading and writing. While regular students may have different abilities and concerns, I have observed that the manner of evaluation and intervention provided for those with learning needs are generally beneficial to them too.
Today, let me share with you the common challenges of students in reading and writing. Here is our agenda. Let's first have a look at some of the statistics pertaining to literacy rates in the Philippines. Then, let's answer the question, what are the general aspects of reading? After which, I'll be presenting the definitions, descriptions, and common challenges in the components of literacy that focus on decoding, spelling, comprehension, and writing. So let's begin. This is the result reported by the Philippine Statistics Authority based on the Functional Literacy Education and Mass Media Survey, or FLEMS, in 2019. An estimated 91.6% among the age range of 10 to 64-year-old Filipinos were considered functionally literate. This is a relative improvement from the 90.3% in 2013. By definition, the functional literacy, functional literacy is the level of literacy which includes not only reading and writing, but also numeracy skills that would help people cope with the daily demands of life. This also comes with reasonable writing skills in order to help an individual engage effectively in practical situations. But is functional literacy enough? Being able to read and write in a functional manner is beneficial. However, given the rapid advance of technology that allows dissemination of information with just a click or swipe, it is important to further develop the skills of learners. In the study of Eisenberg and others in 2010, needed emphasis on engaging with, synthesizing, and evaluating information was explained. This is important in order to discern the data, what data is accurate or not. Analyzing data from multiple sources so that information, decisions, and opinions are made which can facilitate the much needed positive changes in our country. In this light, educators and parents have this crucial responsibility in bridging the gap and honing the skills of our children to be more discerning learners and critical thinkers. The main goal of this webinar is to illustrate and explain where in the components and processes of literacy break down, which affect the performance of learners, especially in reading and writing. So let's begin. In order to properly evaluate where the literacy process breaks down, let us note two general aspects of literacy. These are the mechanical and meaning aspects. The mechanical aspect refers to the skill of decoding or spelling words without necessarily understanding what these mean or when used in sentences and longer texts. The meaning aspect, on the other hand, requires comprehension of the words, sentences, and paragraphs that are read or written. If we generalize the components of reading, decoding and spelling can be classified as mechanical skills, while comprehension and writing skills would fall under the meaning aspect of literacy. There are other essential components of reading, such as phonemic awareness and phonics that are specially addressed and developed in the primary grade levels. These skills are part of the essential foundation for spelling and decoding in order to attain fluency. Vocabulary is also, import is also an important component, along with the others, in order to achieve comprehension of the text. As a prelude, to the first component to be presented under the mechanical aspect. Let's have a short activity. I will show scrambled letters of a word. The objective is to figure out what the target word is. After 10 seconds, the target word will be shown. See if your answer is the same. Ready? If your answer is the word problems, then you are correct. Next one.
if you guessed letters, then you're right. Last item. The target answer is sounds. How many did you get correctly? Well done. Did you know that some, both children and adults alike, find this task daunting? There are a number of factors and skills to be able to do the task of unscrambling the letters to form a word such as the need for vocabulary, good visual memory, word recognition, spelling, and decoding. Much like figuring out ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs or message of an encrypted code, this is what happens in decoding a word. Decoding is a mechanical aspect of reading. It is the ability to associate the sound of each corresponding letter and then blend these sounds to read the word. However, an individual may be able to decode a word without really understanding what it means, which makes this aspect a mechanical process. If a learner in a primary grade level has not achieved mastery of the association of letters to their corresponding sounds, the decoding process will be laborious. As such, reading at phrase, sentence, and short text levels would be a frustrating task. It is also possible that a learner knows the name and formation of letters, but not the corresponding sounds. He is able to name the alphabet, but experiences confusion with what sound is related to the letter symbol. Another problematic scenario could be difficulties in blending the sounds of a word. The learner may also have difficulty building his or her bank of basic sight words such as the, is, on, and you. All the mentioned struggles directly affect reading fluency due to poor performance in terms of accuracy, pace, intonation, and expression in reading. Emotionally, the learner is either feeling discouraged in reading or avoids the task altogether. If the challenges in reading are not immediately addressed in the primary level, then all the more difficulties will occur as the learner goes to middle school and high school. With a higher readability level of texts in these grade levels, not to mention the increasing complexity of the topics, a learner would likely have aversion in reading as he struggles through reading-based tasks across all subjects. Similarly, listening and keeping track during reading sessions in class would be a tedious task for the learner as well. The learner would also tend to focus more on the decoding part such that remembering the details and understanding what the target meaning of the text is would be a struggle. Overall, the learner would tend to dislike and avoid independent reading of the required materials in class. Before I present the next literacy component subsequent to the mechanical aspect of reading, let's have another quick activity. The objective is to identify the correct spelling among three choices in each item. Five seconds will be provided. Are you ready for this one? The word is receipt. If your answer is letter B, you're right. Next one. How about this one? Accommodate. The answer is C. This, this last one is tricky. The word is entrepreneur. If your answer is C, you're right again. Did you get all the three items correctly? Even as adults, we sometimes get confused with the spelling of tricky words, right? Aside from decoding, another mechanical aspect of literacy is spelling. When we spell, we assign letter symbols to sounds and string them together to form a word. 
For the English language and many others, it is one thing to represent the sounds of a word using the basic sounds of the alphabet. It is another when the corresponding phonological and orthographical systems branch out to different letter combinations or graphemes such as EE as in feet or IGH as in night or rules about how written letters are arranged in English that need to be followed. In Filipino, it is relatively easier to spell words because the words are generally spelled by directly following the letter sound system in Filipino. And there are just a few rules to follow in terms of letter combinations. In the English language, if a learner in the primary level has not mastered the letter sound system of the alphabet, spelling problems occur such as confusion with the sound to letter association and the placement of sounds in a word may get mixed up. A struggling learner would tend to misspell a word in different ways on different occasions. He or she would not notice the spelling mistakes that occur and would tend to accomplish writing tasks at a slower pace. Notice in the first sample the different spelling mistakes made by the child. Can you decipher what he wrote? I like a friend who is not arguing, who is kind to people, who talks nice to me. Note how some words were spelled phonetically and special phonemes like UE and soft C were not applied. And see how letters were substituted, U for A um, and soft, letter S for soft C and how letters were inserted or have switched places. Furthermore, struggle to spell accurately at sentence or paragraph level would happen as observed in the next sample. In the first output, intended meaning of the child was fairly conveyed in the list of phrases, while in the second output, the quality of the work was diminished by the numerous spelling errors. As mentioned earlier, if the problems in spelling are not addressed while still in the primary level, these concerns would worsen. Older learners would not be keen on writing as their hesitation and frustration mount given their persistent mistakes in spelling. Slower pace in test taking and messy work are generally observed in their performance. Here are spelling samples made by students from middle school to high school. You will notice the concerns in accuracy, familiarity with spelling rules and letter combinations, and concerns in visual memory and handwriting. If spelling errors such as letter reversals, which refer to the horizontal change in the orientation of the letters, inversion, that would be the vertical change in the letter orientation, if there are insertion of letters, omission and transposition, if these occur often in different types of writing tasks, it will be advisable to explore the need for formal evaluation of the child by a medical specialist and or literacy specialist. As preparation for the meaning aspect of reading, we will have two short exercises. Please read the words in, these li in this list. Are there any words unfamiliar to you? I'm quite sure that you know all these words. How about if you put all these words together? How much of this paragraph do you understand? For the math majors among you, this text must be a piece of cake to understand. But for those not so math inclined, this passage might as well be a foreign language. So what does this mean? Now let's take a look at this next passage. Read along with me. Last Cerny, Fingal Dobe, and Pribin were in the nerdling 
trepering gloopy cables and cleaning burly greps. Suddenly, a ditty trestle boofed into Fingledobe's tresk. Pribbin glaped and glaped. Oh, Fingledobe, he trived, the ditty trestle is cunning in your grep. Are any of the words familiar? Did you understand the text? Let's see if you can answer the following questions. When did the story happen? Who are the characters in the story? Where were Fingledobe and Priven? What were they doing in Nerdling? Then what happened? What was Pribbin's reaction? So what did Pribbin say? Did you have the same answers? What, the, what does this imply about reading comprehension? I showed this illustration earlier about the components of reading by the U.S. National Reading Panel reported in 1997. These reading components are all connected. In order to effectively and meaningfully understand a text, these all have to work together. As shown in the exercises that we did, knowing the meaning of words does not always ensure comprehension, nor does by simply reading the text accurately. According to the study of Anderson, Hybert, Scott, and Wilkinson in 1995, reading comprehension also depends on the background of the reader, knowing the purpose for reading, and familiarity with the context. These factors facilitate the process of constructing meaning from written texts. According to the study of Durkin in 1973, there should be an interaction between the text and reader. This conveys the importance of engagement in reading and building background knowledge of the reader in order to construct meaningful ideas and connections. Comprehension is a complex cognitive process that is not simply gained through functional literacy. There should be discernment of the details and analysis while reading. The processes involved in comprehension are dependent on having specific knowledge in a content area. Here's a list of comprehension abilities commonly expected across primary, middle, and high school levels in order to accomplish academic tasks. Any concerns in the proficiency of a learner's comprehension skills profile would affect performance in class. Similarly, delays in reading would also be a factor to poor performance. The learner may be, may be slow to follow instructions and accomplish tasks on his or her own. Proper understanding of the text, meaning of keywords, and sequence of events would be hampered. Problems in noting literal and implied meaning would be difficult for the learner. Learners with delayed skills in comprehension commonly perform better in tasks with objective type tests. As seen in these samples, open-ended questions and independence in generating answers are more difficult. If the learner also has reading and spelling concerns, further difficulties in producing quality outputs would be observed. Similar difficulties in comprehension in the higher levels can be noted. Given the longer texts and more complex ideas and contexts presented in middle and high schools, the tasks of remembering and understanding details are more arduous for a learner that has problems in comprehension. In this worksheet sample that pertains to a science lesson, the student was inconsistent in differentiating among the terms and concepts which impeded the inferential thinking process. Providing an explanation was also difficult since the learner's grasp of the numerous key terms in the lesson was ineffective. 
It is one thing to be able to spell words accurately as one of the goals in functional literacy. It is quite another to construct meaningful ideas in a written manner for various purposes and audiences. Writing is a very important tool for self-expression and as means to make changes that matter in life. This is how laws are made and amended or how business and social connections are established. Certainly, teaching writing skills for functional use is not enough in order to develop leaders among our youth today or people that they call now as influencers who can motivate others to take action on significant issues that can change the pace of how we live our lives. Similar with the previous components of literacy, addressing the problems while the learner is young is crucial. The wider the gap, the more difficult it would be for the child. At primary level, the following challenges in writing are common. Poor letter formation, legibility, and pace in writing. While these problems can easily be assumed as, mechanical, as a mechanical issue, this can also be indicative of a learning disability. Problems in constructing proper sentences in writing, even with adequate oral skills. Difficulties in writing may yield short responses. Incoherence may also be noted, given some confusion with the sequence of events and ideas. Given the increasing demands in middle school and high school, higher skills in comprehension, organization, vocabulary, spelling, and writing are required. Thus, there are learners who find a writing task overwhelming. Problems such as inconsistent legibility and spelling mistakes, difficulties in generating and developing ideas such that the content in essays are poorly planned. As an ending note, we as educators should always aim for developing the literacy skills of the children, not only for functional purposes, but to hone them into thoughtful, involved, and empowered learners. Even those who need extra guidance and support can become our country's main agents of change and progress. With compassion, patience, and appropriate tools, this is certainly possible. Thank you very much. Thank you, Teacher Maki, for sharing your time with us. Through your session, we have now a better understanding of different challenges that learners experience in learning to read and write. Moving on to our next session. Our next session is all about supporting students with challenges in reading and writing. This topic will cover strategies that learners can use when faced with challenges in reading and writing. Educators will be presented with ways by which they can provide learners the support they need to perform literacy tasks. But before we dive in, let us get to know our resource, resource speaker for this session. Our resource speaker, who is also called as Teacher Hazel, is a literacy specialist. She is in the board of directors of the Philippine Dyslexia Foundation, and Teacher Hazel has extensive experience in, in teaching persons with persons with learning and behavioral challenges. She is currently an assistant professor of the University of the Philippines, Diliman College of Education, and teaches courses on the reading process and developing specialized literacy instruction. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Maria Hazel Preclaro Ongtenko, Special Education Professor, University of the Philippines College of Education. Let us give her a virtual round of applause.
Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for inviting us in celebration of DEPED Accessibility Week 2020. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about supporting students with challenges in reading and writing. I'm from the UP College of Education, Literacy Education Area, and I have been a member of the Philippine Dyslexia Foundation advocating for the needs of persons with learning disabilities. Our objective for this morning is to cover strategies that learners can use when faced with challenges in reading and writing. Specifically, we'll look into decoding words and passages, then strategies for spelling words, strategies for comprehending texts, and of course, strategies for helping students write to express one's thoughts. So, this pandemic has made us reimagine education in many ways. We have had to reassess our priorities, recalibrate expectations, review the curriculum, rework the delivery of instruction, and of course, revisit stakeholder involvement. All of these, of course, are there to help us improve learning outcomes, increase engagement, increase awareness, increase efficiency, but most of all, increase a love for learning. And so, with our knowledge of the different domains of literacy, it is important for us to also understand that a whole reading program is necessary for learners to actually learn reading and writing tasks. Our schools provide developmental reading programs across the grade levels. This shows us the how-tos, how to read, how to write. The content area reading programs, however, go a little beyond by helping us learn specialized language. This means academic language that is used for being able to learn subjects like math, practical arts, social studies, and science, and all the other subjects in school. Now, aside from content area reading programs, however, we need to make available for those who need the help remedial programs, or as I would call it, specialized literacy programs, programs that are designed for specific needs of learners. So, game ka na ba? Shall we begin learning about these strategies? Let's go back to Teacher Mackey's description of decoding challenges. When we are experiencing challenges in decoding, we have difficulty with mastering the basic letter sounds, blending these sounds to form words, recognizing words automatically, and when we read, we might read with a slow pace, lack fluency, have poor phrasing, or might even avoid the task altogether. Ang goal natin ay makapagbasa ang bata. And so, what domains are we going to incorporate? We need to build upon phonological awareness skills, alphabet knowledge, word recognition, and of course, experience with reading stories. So, when we talk about phonological awareness, it's the ability to display sensitivity to sounds in spoken language. Nahihimay ba natin ang wika? So, una dyan, if we have a sentence, nabibilang ba natin ang mga salita? Are we able to count the words in the first sentence? Tumahol ang aso. Ilang salita yun? Di ba tatlo? Yung susunod, bumili ako ng tinapay. Ilang salita yun? Apat. Galeng, di ba? E paano naman yung huli? Bukas magdidilig ako ng halaman. Aba, lima na. This is showing us that we can break down a whole utterance into individual words. But the process doesn't stop there. We move on to an even smaller unit. Pagbilang naman ng mga pantig. Are we able to count syllables? Pwede rin natin tong ipakita in game format and help children identify syllables by clapping or counting or stomping their feet so that they can count the parts of a word. For example, if we have the word koche, ilang bahagi yon? Palakpak natin ha, koche. That requires two claps. So there are two syllables sa salitang koche. Paano naman kung motorsiklo? 
Ilang palakpak yon? Motorsiklo. Aba, apat ata yon. Paano naman kung sa wikang Ingles? Let's try helicopter. Helicopter. Apat yon. But importante na alam natin yon, kasi we need to break down a word into smaller parts. When we recognize syllables, then we are ready for the next task. And what is the next task? Pagbilang naman ng mga tunog. So, halimbawa, tignan natin ang salitang aso. Ilang tunog ang salitang aso? a s o Tatlong tunog yan, kaya hmm, tatlong titik ang gagamitin natin. Eh, paano naman ang pusa? P, U, S, A. Aba, apat yun. At dahil Filipino ang gamit natin, apat rin na titik ang gagamitin din natin sa bawat tunog. Sa apat na tunog. Eh, paano naman kung isda? I, S, D, A. Apat yun. Eh, kung English yan. Let's try fish. F, E, S, H. F, for F, E, for I, and S, H. That's an SH. Pag alam natin yung mga tunog, makikita rin natin kung paano natin irerepresenta ang bawat tunog na yon. And so, it's important that we are sensitive to these sounds. We can also be sensitive of patterns that we hear in words. For example, kaya ba natin pagtugmain ang mga salitang ito? Anong katugma ng itis? Doon sa mga larawan sa taas at mga larawan sa baba. Itis rhymes with o Katugma ng lapis. Paano naman ang baboy? Ah, katugma naman niya ang kahoy. Mahalaga na we are able to notice the parts of the word in terms of their similarities and differences. Dito, what we recognize is rhyme. E paano naman sa pagtukoy ng mga tunog? Let's say, initial sounds in words. Tignan nga natin, maglaro nga tayo ng maalis, taya. <laughs> Tignan natin ha. Ang unang larawan dito sa unang linya natin ng mga hayop ay baka, baboy, kambing. Alin kaya ang taya dyan? B, baka, nagsisimula sa titik B. B, baboy, nagsisimula sa titik B. At kambing, k, nagsisimula sa titik K. Aba, ang taya ay yung kambing. Sino ang taya dito sa ahas, kuneho at aso? Sigurado kong nahulaan niyo na, di ba? Yung kuneho. Kapag alam niyo yan, nakikita na natin na nahihimay natin ang mga salita sa mas maliliit na bahagi nito. And that readies us for representing those sounds into letters that form words. So, what do we need? Para masanay sa mga ganitong skill, we need to intensify instruction. If it turns out that our children are finding that kind of task challenging, then we need to increase opportunities for doing these tasks. We need to increase its frequency and maybe even have more learning sessions if available. We can also do several tasks or the task several times a day. For example, ako, ako nanay ako eh. So, for example, meron akong maliit na anak at gusto kong ipractice yung mga tunog ng mga salita. Hmm. Alin kaya ang mga Salitang nagsisimula sa titik P na pwedeng alagaan sa bahay. Mm, palaka? Mm, pabo? Then I can practice the letter P with my child. Meron bang mga gamit sa kusina na nagsisimula sa B? Baka pwedeng baso? Basahan? Or pag naliligo, pinaliligo natin si baby, pwede ba natin tingnan kung ano yung nagsisimulang uh, bahagi ng katawan na nagsisimula sa M? Mm, mata? <laughs> pwede naman, di ba? So, pwede natin yan gagawin sa isang buong araw. Pero, kung nahihirapan pa rin ang bata, what else can we do? We can represent the text or concretize it so that the child is able to recognize the individual sounds. Gagamit tayo ng piso-piso. Kunyari ito. A O, bawat piso sa kahon, eh meron tayong isang tunog na nire-representa. Those are Elkonin squares. But we can also come up with flashcards or posters that also find or provide ways for remembering. So, kunyari ito, hindi lang letter A ang nakasabit sa dingding natin siguro. We could put A, aso, 
A. Merong titik, larawan, salita at minsan pamamaraan pa ng pagbigkas. A. Makakatulong yan para mabalikan ng bata ang mga tunog, pangalan o titik o keyword na pwede nilang tandaan. Yan ang tinatawag na multisensorial learning. Minsan pa nga, pwede nilang isulat yan sa hangin. A. Aso. A. Pwede rin natin siyang gawing laro. Kunyari, ayan na naman, meron tayo ulit laro sa tugma. Meron tayong body parts, di ba? Kamay at saka ilong. Itaas ang kamay kapag ang salita ay katugma ng kamay. Pero kung katugma ng ilong, hawakan ang ilong. Pag tinignan natin ito, talong, hawakan ng ilong. Bahay, taas ang kamay. Gulong, hawakan ng ilong. Di ba pwede naman maglaro? Masaya, di ba? Pag nahanda na natin sila doon sa mga tunog na mga titik na pwede ipagsama-sama, pwede na nating subukan na pagbasahin sila. At pag pinagsama-sama natin ito, dahan-dahan natin silang tutulungan na ipagsama-sama ang bawat tunog na A, M, para magkaroon ng salitang AM. Ama, para sa salitang ama, at mama, para sa salitang mama. At pag napagtugma nila ang salita at ang larawan, alam natin na naiintindihan nila ang mga salitang yan. Sa wikang Ingles, hindi lang sounding out ang ginagawa, pero meron rin tayong ginagamit na word families. Kadalasan nitong nakikita sa wikang Ingles na kunyari, ang CBC words natin ay na merong EN na ending. Ben, den, fan, di ba? Nakikita natin yung collection of words na yan. Pwede rin namang all family. Ball, call, fall, hall. Pero hindi lamang yan ginagamit sa mga nasa primary level. Ginagamit rin yan sa mga syempre nasa primary to intermediate grade levels, kapag mahirap-hirap na rin ang mga patterns na inaaral. Kunyari, ang bridge, badge, fudge, at judge ay halimbawa ng consonant trigraph na DGE. Collection niya ng mga salita na ang huling tunog ay G na may DGE na pattern. E paano naman ang witch tsaka stitch? Yan naman ay isang pair of words na ch ang tunog. Pero, mind you, Tatlong titik ang ginagamit sa pag-spell ng ch, t, c, h. Kapag tinuro natin ang tinatawag nating ortografiya sa mga bata, then it will help them recognize more words at a time dahil may pattern. O, tignan nga natin. Can we play a little game? Para tong boggle or bookworm. Can we put the syllables together to form words? Hmm, Filipino. Simulan natin. Tama. Pwede. Pata. Hmm, nakakagutom. Mata. Meron akong mata. Yan. Those are just a few examples of the words that we can use or we can find in our magic square. O ito naman. Tignan natin. Oh. Ang dami palang mahahanap dito sa magic square na ito. Pwede ba tayong maglaro ng magic square sa bahay? Sa paaralan? Sa jeep? Kahit saan ata. Pwede. Meron din tayong mga resources mula sa Bayanihan Eskwela. Kami ay kasama sa paggawa ng mga video na ito. Isa dito ay yung kasama ko si Janine. Nagturo kami kung paano hatiin ang isang salita. This is called syllabication. In Filipino, pagpapandig. pagpapantig. So, ang isda pwedeng hatiin sa dalawa. Pag nag-slash ka sa gitna ng S tsaka D para sa salitang isda, mas madaling basahin ang pantig na is at pantig na da. Para pag nabasa mo siya ng tama, ipagsasama mo siya is da. Ganon din ang tatlong, ganon din ang nahuli. At syempre, pag mahaba ng silita, four syllables, mangingisda. So, this is called task analysis. Hinahati natin ang isang gawain into manageable chunks or steps para mas madali siyang gawin. Marami pa po na bayanihan iskwela na mga video na gawa po namin kasama ang um, mga eksperto sa literacy. Kaya't panoorin na, okay? Ito ay pagtuturo ng pagbabasa, pagtuturo ng pagkukwento, at pagtuturo rin ng kung paano gawing bihasa magbasa ang mga nasa intermediate level. 
hindi lang primary level. So what else do we do? We need to bridge those skills with other domains. Bakit? Kasi closely tied ang decoding sa spelling, di ba? Kung ang decoding pagbabasa, encode, um, ang spelling ay encoding naman. Ikaw naman ang gumagawa ng code. So what did Teacher Maki say about the challenges in spelling? Aba, yun na naman. Mastery of spelling sounds. Uh, letter sounds, mastery of letter sound associations, uh, poor tracking of sequence of sounds, and sometimes they even write slowly. So when we have difficulties in spelling, then dapat bigyan natin sila ng pagkakataon to gain mastery and phonological awareness, alphabet knowledge, and work with spelling lists as well as spelling rules para sila ay makapagbaybay. We can give them word sort activities. For example, if you're learning the first two letters of the Marungka approach, you'll distinguish words that begin with M mm and distinguish words that begin with A. Ah. Kunyari sa Filipino, manok, nandun siya sa tabi ng mais. Kung aso, nasa tabi naman siya ng apa. These are ways for us to sort words that we hear before we transform them into its written format. So, in English, Paano naman natin yan gagawin? Nako, komplikado ang English pag meron na tayong long vowel sounds. For example, if I were to spell the word train, which would I use? A-I or A-Y? Hmm, saan ko ba nadidinig ang A sound? Train. Aba, nasa gitna. I think I use A-I there. Paano naman pag ibabaybay ko ang pale? p -ale. Hmm. I think I use AI there. It's also in the middle. Pero paano naman pag ang salitang gray, ang ibabaybay ko, gray. Hmm, saan ko na dinirig ang A? It's at the end. Tama. Paano naman ang tray? Tray. Aba, nasa huli din. What do I use for those? AY. Okay? So, meron din pala tayong spelling rules na pwedeng gamitin sa pagbabaybay sa wikang Ingles. We use AI at the beginning or middle of words, while we use AY at the end of words. Intriguing ba? <laughs> we can also teach children na himayin ang bawat salita into its component sounds. Iisa-isahin nila, for example, the word flat. Kadalasan, ang mga batang nahihirapan magbaybay, nakakalimutan nila na meron palang vowel sound. Okay, so... Sometimes, we might want them to identify that first. If we ask them, please spell the word flat. Flat. Hmm, what's the vowel sound? A. Ah, then, we set aside the letter A. Then, we can spell flat. Flat. What's the first sound? F. That's the letter F. Flat. What's the next sound? L. That's the letter L. Flat. What's the next sound? A. Ah, that's the letter A. Flat, what's the last sound? That's the letter T. Kailangan sila masanay na hanapin ang bawat tunog. At pag nasanay na sila, magiging automatic na ang sunod-sunod na pag-identify ng bawat tunog at titik. And again, you can use the spelling lists as your take-off point to help them follow a pattern and spell more than just one word. Pag nasanay silang ibaybay ang salitang ball, Likelihood, the likelihood that they can spell call, fall, haul is very high. What else can we do? We can also use spelling mnemonics. Aba, anong gagawin natin dito? Have you ever had trouble spelling desert and differentiating the spelling of that from desert? Parang hirap. Parang pareho lang ang tunog, di ba? Pero ang accentuation ay iba. Di ba? Meron siyang stress dun sa desert second syllable. And when we're talking about dessert, as in yung panghimagas, then dessert means strawberry shortcake. S, S, double S. That tells us that dessert is spelled with double S. There's another one. A dessert is super sloppy. Lalo na kung ice cream, di ba? So that's another double S. Okay? And there are others, but let's move on. Teacher Maki also mentioned comprehension challenges. Difficulty in grasping meaning as one reads, poor recognition of details, difficulty with figurative language, difficulty with establishing connections, or even difficulty with looking at text structure. 
And if that is the case, then how do we help? First, we bridge uh, comprehension by starting with unlocking words. We need to teach them what the meanings are for words that might be difficult, like talangka, dalampasigan, tuwid. And we can use pictures to describe this. Ano to? Anong itsura? Anong kakaibang katangian? Kahit ito, nabibigo. We can even put in context. Nabibigo ang lalaki sa um, na nakaupo kasi nawala ang kanyang pitaka. Diba? And then we can say, ano bang ibig sabihin na nabibigo? Malungkot na malungkot dahil nawala ang kanyang pitaka. We can also put it in context. Why is the mechanical aspect. We need to concentrate on the mechanical aspect alongside the meaning aspect. So if we know the meanings of words, let's take a look at what we're going to do to read it. While we're reading, kailangan makaunawa din tayo. So sabay or simultaneous ang prosesong ito. Comprehension is the ability to glean meaning and so ihahanda natin ang mindset ng bata. Anong madalas na bilin sa'yo ng mama mo? Ano naman ang bilin mo sa nakababata mo kapatid? Ba't tayo nag tatanong tungkol sa bilin? Kasi ang kwento ay tungkol sa bilin. Anong madalas na bilin ng talangka sa kanyang anak? At ang kwentong ito ay tungkol sa talangka na pagilid maglakad. Pero sabi niya sa anak niya, maglakad ka ng tuwid. Pero dahil talangka sila, hindi nila kaya yan, di ba? Kaya nung sinubukan din ng nanay na maglakad, aba, nakita niya na siya rin pala ay pagilid na maglakad. At dapat hindi niya inaastaan ang anak na tuwid kung patagilid din naman siya. Maglakad. Okay, so dahil meron tayong ganitong parable o fable pala, kwento ni Isopo, paano natin yan babasahin nang hindi naman sobrang nakakabigla, parang ang dami naman ng salitang ito para sa isang batang nasa siguro ikalawa, ikatlong baitang. Dapat may slash ang mga words and phrases para hindi sila mahirapang magbasa. Pwede i-cut up yung teksto o hatiin ang teksto ng may slash para alam natin kung saan tayo titigil. That will also encourage prosody. Kapag nahirapan pa po, lalo ang bata, pwede rin naman na share tayo sa pagbasa. May highlighted portion para sa bata, may highlighted portion din para sa guro o sa magulang or learning partner o sa ibang kaklase. Tapos, kapag naka-color code na siya, mas madali na siyang tuloy-tuloy na basahin dahil kanya-kanya tayo ng babasahing bahagi. And then, mapakikinggan natin ang kwento at maintindihan, mas maintindihan natin ito. What else can we do? We can look at text structure, graphic organizers have guide questions, and provide sentence stems for answering those guide questions. How do we do that? Pwede tating gamitin ng isang story frame that shows who, wanted, but, so, in the end, eto nangyari. Those are keywords, no? Sino gusto pero kaya sa wakas para makapagbuod tayo or summarize. But we'll not only stop there. We can also have discussion questions that touch the literal, interpretative, evaluative, integrative, and creative levels of comprehension. This is an example of of questions that we might ask. Sino ang bida? Literal level. Anong naramdaman niya nung pinagtawanan siya? Inferential level. Tama ba? Napagtawanan sila. Critical level. Ikaw ba? Pinagtatawanan mo ba ang kakaiba na kumilos? Integrative level. Ano pang pwede natin gawin para to pa rin ang bilin ni nanay? Creative na rin siya. So that said, no, we can also categorize the questions in terms of, hmm, can I find the answers in the book or in my head? Para madali natin siyang sagutan. At kapag kaya na natin intindi ng kwento, we can even write about what we've learned. In writing, we look at penmanship, spelling, and composing. So, anong sinabi ni Teacher Maki na writing challenges? Poor letter formation, limited written output, poor organization, and may write slowly. Kaya kailangan natin ng alphabet chart at kailangan natin ng letter story para ituro. Luko, ito ang letter B. Saan siya nagsisimula isulat? Dito sa taas. 
paano naman ang letter D? Ito, sa gitna siya sinusulat. Para hindi na tayo nalilito, di ba? Ano pang pwedeng gawin? Bigyan ang pagkakatao ng mga bata na hindi lang magbasa, kundi magsulat. Ayan, love note sa akin ng anak ko. Love you daw. <laughs> Siyempre, ang mga bata palagi nagsusulat ng card, nagdo-drawing, nagsusulat ng uh, liham, di ba? So, sana, bigyan natin sila ng pagkakataon. Tiyo mo, natuto yung anak ko magsulat ng Rogue One. <laughs> Mahirap yun, iba-iba ya. Kasi nga, sa kagustuhan niya manood kami ng isang pelikula. At pag may practice, di mas hahaba at hahaba ang sinusulat. Because composition is the ability to express ideas effectively in writing. Ito ang isang four square grid. Tandaan niya na, four square grid. Saan ito ginagamit? Sa pagsusulat. Pag nasa primary, intermediate levels, baka kailangan natin na structure ang kanilang pagsulat. And this is a four square grid na... Um, graphic organizer for us to write the main idea at the center and then yung four other squares yung details that support that main idea or topic sentence the rectangle at the bottom is the concluding sentence why is this a good idea kasi all you have to do is copy that and you already have a paragraph ang bilis di ba so that is called the four square grid how else can we help composition can only be drafted or made if we have the language for it. Kaya magsalita, magsalita, magsalita. Let's develop oral language and vocabulary. Oral language is the ability to speak and express oneself orally. And therefore, you want to be able to gain that proficiency in your mother tongue, Filipino, and English. And of course, we'd like to be able to do that in order to share about ourselves, to talk about all of these things that we value, like our fondest memories, our experiences, our family members, people that we care for and love, our favorites and hobbies, like drawing, um, maybe our favorites in terms of the food we like, the sport we want to try, the processes that we want to learn, like maybe milking a goat. We can only do that if we have the language to do so and the vocabulary to express our ideas clearly. So we can play games that will help us identify things in our world. Identify nouns. Yeah. Identify also verbs, how we act. And of course, describe mga pang-uri. Okay? Siyempre, meron ding pagkakataon magkwento ng mga pangyayari. And if there are wordless picture books, even better. You are the one providing the words for each picture in front of you. Diba? So, ano na ang nasubukan mo, Sabian? Here is a book that I was able to put together because my son had pictures growing up. And I put these together not only to develop reading, but to develop yung kasanayan sa Filipino. Ano na ang nasubukan mo, Sabian? Nasubukan mo na bang magkaraoke? Opo, nasubukan ko na yan. Nasubukan mo na bang magpin magpintura sa mukha? Opo, nasubukan ko na yan. Nasubukan mo na bang maligo sa bula? Opo, nasubukan ko na yan. Nasubukan mo na bang humanap ng isang easter egg? Opo, nasubukan ko na yan. Nasubukan mo na bang sumakay ng kabayo? Opo, nasubukan ko na yan. Nasubukan mo na bang tumulong sa paglinis ng bahay? Opo, nasubukan ko na yan. Ano pa ang gusto mong subukan? So, nasanay siya na sabihin ang mga salitang ito, mga pangumusat na ito, at nasanay din siyang gamitin yan in everyday language. Nasanay din ba siyang basahin yan? Siyempre, kasi paulit-ulit. And so, we are able to maybe use our language to write letters to friends, at yan o, oh, humaba na ang sulat ng anak ko sa kanyang kaibigan. And what else do we need to notice? Text patterns. The first one is an example of giving examples. This one. And the second one is uh, downward. We show the sequence of events. And the two circles down here are the Venn diagrams to show comparison and contrast. We can use these flowcharts in order to document text structure or paragraphs that are written with a fixed text structure. And this will help us write, write what? Even more complex texts like, say, a persuasive essay. We can 
grow into taking a look at our purposes for actually writing our thoughts down. So my student before, I taught how to persuade using writing. And we made something that focused on bullying. Nakagawa siya ng essay and look, later on siya na yung pumili ng topic at pinag-usapan niya ang corporal punishment. Oh, di ba? Ang lalim na. At hindi lang yun, nag-citations pa siya. <laughs> so that said, no, we can only help our students grow like that if we are allowing them to be aware of the way that they learn each skill. So being self-aware is part of the whole package. Let's help them keep focused. Help them choose the right channel to concentrate, filter distractions, pace themselves, self-monitor, be alert and awake, and control their moods and their body as they accomplish reading and writing tasks. We also want them to learn how to find strategies that will help them bridge the gaps. A popular strategy is this performance strategy, and a lot of my students like it, in remembering important information. And I will end my presentation with this. Why? I want you to learn the seven continents, and you'll see the performance strategy works. Let's sing it. There are seven, there are seven continents, continents, Europe, Asia, Africa, North and South America, Antarctica, Australia. And because of that performance strategy, if I shift slides, you can sing it on your own. And you know it already, the seven continents. So let's remember, intensify instruction for those who need it, increase opportunities to read and write, provide these with regularity. Build reading and writing by developing other literacy domains in tandem, diba? Represent information that the child is having difficulty learning in a particular way. And of course, provide feedback and praise so they will feel encouraged. And don't forget, make learning authentic, purposeful, and fun. That said, have our objectives been met? I sure hope so. Maraming salamat po. Thank you for the invitation. Wow, thank you so much for that very educational session, Teacher Hazel. Undoubtedly and unquestionably, we learned vastly from your session. The strategies you have shared will provide extreme support to the educators, learners, and parents. I, for one, will surely go back to all of your sessions, study it all over again, and use it to teach my daughter, my five-month-old daughter, how to read and write. Thank you very much. And before we proceed, allow me to share our reminders. To our teachers and learners, you can install and activate your Microsoft 365 account by following these steps. Kindly talk to your school admin or division ICT coordinator on how you can get your Microsoft account. Once you have your account, kindly log into office.com and remember to change your password and confirm it. For You will also have the option to add some security questions. And once done, kindly confirm your settings so you can use and explore your free Microsoft 365 account. For a more detailed explanation, let us all watch this video. Pumunta sa office.com at mag-login gamit ang Microsoft account na binigay sa atin ng DepEd. I-type natin ang ating email and then ang temporary password. Sa mga first time logins, kailangan natin palitan ng ating temporary password. So makikita natin itong dialog box na ito. So make sure na palitan natin ito to our original and a more secure password. Once done, kailangan natin isecure ang ating account. Now, normally, 
hihingan tayo ng phone, authentication, ng email, or maglalagay tayo ng security questions. Kailangan natin i-fulfill ang isa sa mga ito. For this example, try natin i-authenticate ang phone para mag-secure ang ating account. So, piliin natin yung country, which in this case, the Philippines, and i-type natin ang ating registered mobile number. Dito sa registered mobile number, pwedeng i-text sa atin or itawag sa atin ang verification code. Kapag natanggap natin ang verification code, ita-type natin sa field sa ibaba. And there you go. Now, meron tayong access sa portal. Now, dito sa portal, may kita natin lahat ng benefits and lahat ng apps na pwede nating i-download. We can click on Install Office para mag-download lahat ng ito and magamit na natin sila. For accessible resources, links, and related online trainings from DepEd in Microsoft Philippines, kindly refer to the links that are being flashed on your screens. We have links for the following. Resources and accessibility for remote learning. HTTPS colon double slash aka dot ms slash special ed resources. For accessibility guide for educators and parents. HTTPS colon double slash aka dot ms slash educator guide accessibility for accessibility guide for vision hearing mobility speech and learning we have https colon double slash aka dot ms slash msft accessibility guide and for other related trainings from microsoft and deped we have https colon double slash aka.ms slash access fundamentals training. At this point, just like the previous days, we are going to play again a short game called Mentimeter. It's a trivia game where all you have to do is select the correct answer based on the flashed question. These questions are based on your sessions delivered by our resource speakers a few minutes ago. All right, so are you excited to win some prizes? Yes, you already tried. We have prizes for this. Then be prepared and participate in this game. So to join, you are going to need your mobile phone, your tablet, your laptop, or desktop computer. Please go to menti.com and enter the code 81822127. Again, go to menti.com and enter the code 81822127. Kindly type in your full name once you register to the game for us to count your participation. Again, you have to register with your full name so that we can count you in. While you do that, please do stay with us because we have a few announcements later on and we will also be flashing the evaluation form link for you to answer. We would love to hear your thoughts regarding your experience in this event and know what our next step should be and to make these kinds of events more memorable. So allow me to check our participants. Once again, go to menti.com and enter the code 81822127. I am seeing here that we have 80, more than 80 players so far. Join now because Microsoft Philippines will give you a prize. I do not have any idea what that prize is, but surely it is something that will help you. All right, I think we can start. All right, let's start. Remember that top four players who answered correctly and the fastest will be declared as winners. First question, what are the two aspects of reading and writing? 
Is it understanding and learning aspects? Mechanical and meaning aspects or comprehension and learning aspects? I'm sure you're seeing that on your screen too. So the time is up. The correct answer is mechanical and meaning aspects. All right, next question. If a child writes the word star as S-A-T-R, what is this type of spelling error? Is it transposition error, order error, or vowel error? You have 10 seconds to answer. Time is up, and the correct answer is transposition error. Third question. Focus on your screens. What can we do to a multisyllabic word we can, so we can read it? Is it read it again? Find a what's this, shorter word or syllabicate? Six seconds. Time's up and the correct answer is syllabicate. Wow, a lot of you got the correct answer. And for our last question. These are the domains that we can use for the four square grid. Is it oral language, writing vocabulary, writing text, reading, or vocabulary, oral language, text? The four domains, or I mean the domains that we can use for this four square grid, what is it? Time is up and the correct answer is oral language, writing, vocabulary. Wow, 100, oh, 100. I thought 100%. Okay, so congratulations to all our winners. Take note that the one that is flashed now is the participant who answered the fastest, but we will consider three more players who excelled in this game as well. As well. So we have a total of four winners for this round. To our Mentimeter winner, Kindly email us with the following details. You have to email us your name, your school and school address, as well as your region, your contact number, plus the screenshot of the name you used during the game. Again, you have to email us with your name, school and school address, region, contact number, plus the screenshot of the name that you use during the game, you, ca you can send the following information via email at nicanor.sangabriel at deped.gov.ph. Again, the email is nicanor.sangabriel at deped.gov.ph. Congratulations to all the winners. We had two meaningful learning sessions a while back, right? We still have one more session left. The title of our next discussion is Supporting Learners Using Microsoft Learning Tools. This topic is about digital learning tools from Microsoft Education that can help increase focus, concentration, and understanding and include tools to improve reading, writing, math skills for learners of different abilities and backgrounds. Let us get to know our resource speaker for this session. Our speaker for this session is currently the senior trainer of Line Learning Development Solutions, one of the Microsoft Global Training Partners. She passed several Microsoft certifications and became a Microsoft Office Specialist Associate. Since 2016, she was recognized as Microsoft Certified Trainer and served as one of the speakers in the EduTech Singapore and Philippines from 2017 to 2019. She is also one of the national external trainers of DepEd National in Office 365 Empowerment Workshop 
since 2018. Without further ado, let us welcome one of the Microsoft Education Ambassadors of the Philippines, Ms. Imelda Reyes. Let us give her a virtual round of applause. Good day to all of our educators and learners from around the Philippines. I'm Imelda Reyes from Line Learning and Development Solutions. First, we'd like to thank Microsoft Philippines and the Department of Education for inviting us to this event that aims to raise awareness on inclusion and accessibility. Teaching over the past year, whether remote, hybrid, or in-person, has introduced many challenges and opportunities for educators and learners. One of those opportunities for educators is finding new ways to create inclusive classroom where students of all learning abilities and backgrounds have access. There are many different types of disabilities, including learning, visual, hearing, ability, neurodiversity, and mental health. Microsoft Education offers different tools to promote independent learning. The principles of inclusive design has applied to the four foundation pillars of education. These are reading, writing, math, and communication. With many K-12 students still adapting in remote and hybrid environments, meeting their needs, supporting their learning journey has never been more important. Is there a time that you are trying to figure out how to help a child with learning challenges? In the next 20 minutes, we will be discussing supporting learners using Microsoft Learning Tools. Our main focus here is to improve comprehension and encourage independent learning. What Microsoft Learning Tools we're going to use? Yes, your guess is right. The Immersive Reader. And where are we going to get it? If you will open your Microsoft Word, just click View from the ribbon and select Immersive Reader. So the learning tool Immersive Reader creates a reading experience that adds accessibility and comprehension for learners of all ages and abilities. Let's have some demo. Under the View tab, click Immersive Reader. And when we click Play, Geography. The study of Earth's landforms is called Physical Geography. Let so in the voice settings, I can change the voice speed. I can choose female or male voice. Landforms can be mountains and valleys. In the text preferences, we can change the background color, change the fonts, or make the text much bigger. In the grammar tools, I can break the words into syllables. We can also highlight the nouns parts of the speech. If a person has a challenge with color, select show labels. There's a research about visual crowding that some students, if they increase spacing, that can help them with the reading. So may improve yung speed and comprehension nila. And also in the reading preferences, to help our learners focus their eyes, we can use the line focus. Yung parang gumagamit tayo ng ruler. So think about a person with visual disability, ADHD, or early readers. These features will surely help them a lot. They can also be glaciers or rivers. Land called physical features. It is important. So we can change this to three lines or five lines, depends on the size of the text and the spacing. Another feature is the picture dictionary. It gives the ability to see a picture and hear the world simultaneously. Earth. Earth. 
earth. And finally, we translate in over 60 languages. Microsoft Reader provides changing our language. Say, for example, going to choose Spanish. Choose by word. And student can listen to it. Earth. Tierra. It is also available in Edge browser. To read the contents of this page in the right part of the address bar, click Enter Immersive Reader. You can also press F9. Here, we can set the line focus, increase the text size, and all the same features of Immersive Reader that we have talked about earlier. Immersive Reader is also available in OneNote. If we are providing our lessons and reading materials to our students, we can also use the power of Immersive Reader right there in View, Immersive Reader. Immersive Reader is also available in other Microsoft applications like Teams, Microsoft Lens, PowerPoint on the web, OneDrive, SharePoint, and Outlook. You can go to the link aka.ms slash learning tools flyer so you can see the complete feature availability for each application in different platforms. The possibility of supporting our learners to improve breathing doesn't stop there. Can you give me a like reaction if you know Microsoft Minecraft Education Edition? Or give me a heart or love reaction if you already transform the learning experience of your students using Minecraft Education Edition. All right, so in Minecraft Education Edition, when you click a non-player character or using the book and quill or the portfolio and you are looking at the board or sign, just press letter I on your keyboard to open up the immersive reader. So truly immer immersive reader is a game changer in every education class. Another technology we have learned in the remote learning environment is generating or making formative assessments using Microsoft Forms. How many of you are using Microsoft Forms? If parents are also working from home and that no one will read the content out loud for them, they can use the Immersive Reader. This is built in right into Microsoft Forms. Just click the ellipsis below the title and the description. Click Enable Immersive Reader. And if you're ready to use it, hover your mouse over the ellipsis and click Immersive Reader icon. This will open the instructions or the description with all the grammar options, text, and reading preferences. So they can do that too in every questions and choices of answers. There are also third-party applications where Immersive Reader is available, like in Wakelet, Bansi, Pear Deck, Flipgrid. For more information about digital learning tools from Microsoft Education, visit aka.ms slash learning tools. Now we're going to move to writing. In a remote or hybrid class with students of different learning abilities and background, learning to write can be a special challenge. How can we empower students to improve the quality of their writing? One of the most efficient ways to, for students to get their thoughts out is by dictating them directly to the page. So let us try to use that in Microsoft Word. Here it is under the Home tab, Dictate. Let's open first the dictation settings. Here, we can adjust the settings like the language, can choose among 20 languages. You can 
enable auto punctuation so that Microsoft Words insert periods, exclamation point, and question marks. These are all based on the inflection and pauses. So let's scroll down and dictate some words. Let us click Start Dictation. New line. In principle, many people depend on the rainforest for their living, but it must be used in a sustainable way. What happens in the Amazon will affect your life too, even though the rainforest is not in your own country. New line. Post dictation. So let's add another. Here are some ideas. Colon. Stop dictation. So, nare-recognize niya yung mga colons, uh, period, new line, and uh, kung meron man tayong dapat i-correct, ano yung dapat nating gamitin na tool. Along with the dictation is the editor tool. So, this is another feature in Word, the Intelligent Writing Assistant. It is under Home tab. So, editor helps you catch misspellings and check for grammar. Also, some refinement like uh, capitalization, the use of punctu punctuations, no? yung mga concise, conciseness, and also some formality. So, let us check our document here. So we see here, click to view suggestion. So we can just click acknowledge. And here, approximately. So nagsasuggestion ng words. And with that, on the right part of the of our screen, makikita natin yung mga synonyms o kaya meaning niyan. We can also use the read aloud. Okay, so let us check this one. This is for grammar. So you just select them. And okay, so this is some formality example. Gamitin natin yung does not. So we can also use dictate in OneNote. No? Nandyan din yung dictate button. In PowerPoint. And also in Outlook. So dictation is available in several Microsoft desktop applications and it is built into the free Office 365 education web apps too like Word, PowerPoint, OneNote, and Outlook. Editor and dictation, these are pretty powerful for uh, one being built in and inclusive and another one is it can be used at home remotely over distance learning in person or in hybrid. Both of these tools support writing instruction, thus improves the writing quality of our student. Let's talk about math. How can we help our students read and understand step when solving math equations? How can they improve their math skills? In today's diverse classrooms, Math can pose challenges for students with different skills, abilities, and backgrounds. In Microsoft OneNote, it includes math tools that can help all types of learners. It can use an ink or we can just type the equation. And we can use the math assistant to solve the problem. So let me open my OneNote here. Okay, so let's get started. So first, to draw our equation, we can use the Draw tab and the Pen tool. So we can have a full view if we will hide the navigation. All right, so let us use the Pen tool to draw 
our equation. So I'll be typing 5x plus 3 equals 18. So 5x. Of course, you can also type the equation. Okay, next, we'll be using this marquee select. So we can select our equation there. Now to perform the math assistant, we're going to use the or click the math button here. Okay, so you can fix your equation just in case meron siyang letter or number na hindi na recognize. Pwede rin natin siyang i-convert to, to the same format, no? pero hindi siya naka-drawing like this one. And also, clicking this will show us some options. So, automatic na na-recognize niya yung ating equation. And we have some list of relevant options here. Say, uh, solve for x, or we can insert graph both sides in 2D or graph in 2D. So, let's try, let us try to click that. So, ayan, nakita natin, nag-generate siya ng graph in 3D. We can even insert that on our page. Okay, so let's go back to this option. So, students can see the correct answer by clicking solve for x. So, x here is equal to 3. And even show the four steps for solving the equation. So let us click here, show steps. Students who might have trouble following along with the text in the math pane can view these steps in the immersive reader. The immersive reader makes text easier to read and we'll even read it aloud with visual learners. So let's click. Steps for solving linear equation. Subtract 3 from both sides. 5x equals 18 minus 3. Subtract 3 from 18 to get to 15. 5x equals 15. Divide both sides by 5 x equals 15 fifths. Divide 15 by 5 to get 3. x equals 3. So just, just click this button to exit and let us try another equation by typing 2a plus 6 equals 10. Select the equation, click insert, and then math. Select an action, solve for the value of A, and A here is equals to 2. Students get an opportunity to work on their math skills independently without being stigmatized. So how? By clicking generate a practice quiz button. Using artificial intelligence, Microsoft Forms can generate a new set of similar questions. So let us click Generate Quiz. Okay, we can open this in Microsoft Forms. We can also answer it from here. But let us click Microsoft Forms here. Let's just scroll down and make some guess answer and click Submit. So when they submit their answers, they get immediate feedback, letting them know which question they got right and which ones they didn't. Okay, so teachers who use OneNote Class Notebook can also use this, no? Microsoft Forms Practice Quiz Features to generate assessment. So in here, we have incorrect answer for number two. What the student can do is to uh, type the equation in one note. That's 8a. Let's try that. 
eight a plus sixty four equals two forty and using again the math assistant solve for the value of a and show the steps. So the students will have a chance to understand the equation using practice sets. If you will use this tool in OneNote class notebook, your students will have access to all the math assistance features. So to turn off math assistance, solving the equation for your students during times they're working on tests or homework, navigate to the class notebook, and then in the draw tab, select math and then turn math on or off. Then in the math option, pins that opens, type in how many minutes you'd like it to be turned off for the students and the select the check boxes that features you'd like to turn off and then click apply. So that's it. Improve the reading through immersive reader. Strengthen the writing skills through dictate and editor. Increase math understanding through OneNote Math Assistant. Thank you for your time and I hope that you have learned something about Microsoft Learning Tools. Let us all promote inclusion and accessibility. If you were inspired by today's session, may you please tag us in your Facebook account, use hashtag line learning, and share with us your insights. Again, I'm Imelda Reyes from Line Learning and Development Solutions, inviting you to become advocates of inclusivity. Thank you. Thank you so much for that very informative talk, Ms. Imelda. Indeed, the different tools demonstrated will surely facilitate learning in an inclusive classroom environment. Moving forward, it is crucial that the sessions delivered a while back will be further processed for us to better understand and appreciate them. And one way to do that is by calling our speakers back as we will have a live panel discussion. Joining us again are our resource persons from the Philippine Dyslexia Foundation. We have Ms. Maria Reina Macarinao Pante. From the University of the Philippines Diliman College of Education, we have Maria Hazel Preclaro of Benco. From the Line Learning and Development Solutions, we have Ms. Imelda Reyes. From Virtual Lahan, we have Mr. Ryan Hersava. And from the Department of Education, we have Mr. Nicanor San Gabriel Jr. And to facilitate our live panel discussion, let me call on our partner from Microsoft who is currently working as a Territory Channel Manager, Ms. Ronchi De Leon. Let us give them a virtual round of applause. Hi everyone, good morning. Good morning. First of all, thank you for inviting me to be here. I've been listening to the presentation since this morning and I've been actually learning a lot. So I'm very excited to host this panel um, discussion with you. So siguro let me start. Um, una po, since ang dami natin pinag-usapan, diba? Tools and ways on how we can help students um, with difficulties in reading and writing. So my first question is, ano po naman yung mga bagay na pwede natin gawin 
to translate this into the classroom setting. Ano po yung mga pwede nating gawin um, for students in the classroom who has who have difficulties um, in terms of reading and writing. Siguro, um, Ms. Reina, you can start. Yes. Um, I First of all, I'm so happy that the inclusion policy has been implemented and that Microsoft has all these tools to help those with reading and writing problems. So God bless you for doing that because these tools will actually help dyslexics a lot in class. So uh, to, to actually uh, implement all these ideas that were presented today, I think there should be, the teachers should start with like a simple or informal assessment of the literacy skills of the kids. So simply lang, as long as they will be able to see better the spelling, reading, writing, and comprehension skills of the kids with a designed um, informal assessment para they get to classify them according to at level and those with needs. So when they have a better picture of the these kids under these classifications, then the accommodations needed for those in further need that need further assistance can be implemented. What are these accommodations? It could be like if they will be allowed oral testing, if they will be allowed to use these apps that like what was presented earlier, na gawa ng Microsoft, if they can also adjust the readability of their text, if that is possible. They can also adjust in terms of length of the items, kasi nga slow readers or writers sila. And um, the in general, there will be like, this um, initial adjustment in the expectations. However, because if we if we differentiate these expectations, mas mataas yung chances na the their needs will be uh, addressed and therefore improve better rather than malulunod sila inside the classroom. Na your expectations is just something they cannot cope with right now. So. Pero ang tanong palagi jan is that fair? Is that fair for kids na you know, regular and profiles. We always say that these kids who have these needs are also inside the classroom. And therefore, is it fair to them that we are imposing this traditional standards to these kids with reading and writing um, needs? So it's a, it's a, it, it's also, it also goes, um, it, it's also applicable to them, itong fairness question is. So I would say, yes, there are like at level standards and expectations. And if you accommodations will be given, then pwede pa naman mag work out ng fair adjustments in the grading system. I think that if that is workable, we uh, for some schools with special ed programs, an IEP or an individual educational plan is done and that includes also fair adjustments in the grading system. And those with severe delays naman po in reading and spelling, that's that will need for further assessment now because I understand that these severe traits or characteristics is you know too much not to be handled for a classroom teacher handling like 30, 40, even 50 kids. I understand that. Now, so if the system will also include further assessment for those with severe needs, then that'll be very helpful in terms of this inclusion context we're trying to apply now. Thank you, Ms. Reina. Um, do you have any other insights from the rest of the team? From... Um, I think it's also important to Look at it nga from an equity standpoint. So tama si Teacher Maki na important yung kung ano yung kailangan ng bata, yun ang ibigay. Pero I think we need to be also considerate of the ability of teachers to do so. So tignan rin natin yung teacher-student ratio, I think. Kasi mm -hmm. what I'm seeing working with young kids in smaller groups so far has been very fruitful. Um, I think yung dami lang, yung sheer volume, is already preventing kids from being participative and teachers from being able to keep tabs on all children. And don't palang, whether regular or special, 
uh, yung yung needs ng students um, whatever classification they will all have difficulty um, really learning in an environment where hindi talaga sila natututukan um, only because of the sheer volume yung teacher student ratio so i think it's about time siguro i think the the pandemic has forced us to rethink certain things and that's one of those things i think i agree with assessment and deped does have a tool um to try and look at individual and group uh, performances the fil eri however it's it's been used in in the wrong way i think so maybe revisiting lang no the implementation of that particular tool na it describes how texts can be matched to kids rather than classifying kids is one of the fundamental things that need to be understood about using the filiri but it's great that our our school system has that kasi it can do it can give us a profile of group performance and individual performance but the next question question is make the expectations on parang very difficult to reach for teachers um, just so they don't get too overwhelmed because we are still in the middle of the pandemic. But yes, let's not forget that the kids are just waiting for us to connect with them and really um, encourage them. So we just really need to be creative. So thanks to Microsoft for giving us options. Yes, I see Sir Ryan is um, raising his hand, sir. Yes, um, in addition to this, I think the concept of universal design is not yet very universal sa ating education system as a Philippines. And the more we democratize it, the more we make that accessible, um, the easier it is for our educator to actually adapt, right? Um, and second is the role of um, our parents. It's very, very critical on this. And you, we know in the disability community, very hands-on naman yung mga parents natin. But... Um, they and they know individualized learning. They know their kids are uh, very well, but at the same time, being an educator with you know specific um, set of skills is not an expectations that we should get from our parents um, automatically, um, especially if they don't have that background. So, strengthening um, our I know our parents' community, creating more peer learning amongst them. Other than the PTA, I think there should be like a peer learning community amongst our parents. Other than the support groups, no, specific for education, it will make it easier uh, for, for our um, children and learners with disability. Thank you, sir. Um, I think uh, it was mentioned that the, and it was actually brought up, yung pandemic talaga natin medyo na-shake yung ating education um, situation, di ba? So, um, I would also like to relate this and ask this question na, is it, I'm, I'm sure it's extra challenging now, but are we doing, ex, or do we need to do something more um, to make sure na yung mga estudyante na nahihirapan magbasa and magsulat are, can cope and can, um, can still uh, progress their learning during the pandemic. So yun po. In the in the hybrid context. Yes, Miss Emel. Hello. Good morning once again. Um, you know these technologies. Though we know that these are important, the truth is it can never replace a teacher. So no matter how advanced or smart the computer program or the, the, the products you are giving them, it can never come close to the knowledge and life experiences of the teacher. So I'm talking, at, uh, I'm talking as a parent and at the same time as a teacher. So we all know that classroom cannot function without a teacher. So that's proven. But, you know, not every teacher is the same and not all believe in the same pedagogy. But 
we must accept then that our students are adaptable. So, what we can provide, tulad ng nasabi ng ating mga kapwa speakers, na we need to assess our students. So, ito yung pinaka-first base na dapat na tinitignan natin from the time na nag-fill up sila ng enrollment form or registration form. We can filter our learners with di different disabilities so that when we provide our learning materials, whether it is in the face-to-face -face or in the remote hybrid uh, hybrid learning environment, we can personalize. Now, when I say person, personalize, we can include a technology like a personalized tech, no? personalized tech infused learning. So the same technology, maybe they are using immersive breather, but we can give them specific features of that immersive reader. Now, how about those who have no access to the internet or to the devices. Siguro ibalik natin yung dati. As I mentioned a while ago, yung focus reading, pwede natin silang paggamitan ng ruler so that they can focus the reading per line only. So yeah, I think that's uh, one way that we can support our students by uh, personalized tech infused learning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Emma. I see teacher Hazel is also raising her hand. I think yung, ano, yung accessibility of books, I think that's very important because if we want them to really learn how to read, then they really do need books that they can read. So, siguro coordinating with publishing houses, di ba, or, or those that have um, um, forms of text na pwedeng basahin ng mga bata, um, giving these away for free, di ba? or sponsoring library hubs, and making sure that books are accessible, di ba? is something that I think is still lacking. Um, and because nga, all the more glaring yan, because of the pandemic, kids can't physically go to libraries, for example, in some areas, then all the more I think that the books need to be in their hands. So I think that something needs to be um, put together to make sure that that happens. Bring books closer to kids. Thank you, Ms. Hazel. Sir Nick? Okay, so good morning to all of you, to my uh, co-panelists and to our speakers. Thank you po sa inyong uh, mga inputs, no? Nakaka-inspire. On the part of DepEd, uh, yung mga binanggit po ni like in our uh, division, the student inclusion division, we have some uh, conversion of our uh, uh, existing learning materials to accessible formats. So like Kuya Alan uh, or Sir Alan, uh, talagang uh, on his part, talagang uh, nakikipag-communicate with ICTS, one of our in charge sa mga conversion even in the BLR. Tama po si Ma'am uh, Hazel, kailangan natin talaga ng mga materials that are uh, uh, accessible to our uh, uh, learners with disabilities. Tapos po yung uh, regarding this uh, partnership of DepEd and Microsoft Philippines, yung integration ng technology, most especially sa uh, training ng SPED content and pedagogy, ini-integrate na namin to. Uh, last time in the training of our teachers because of the pandemic, hindi, na, hindi kami nag-stop. We, di we did it uh, virtually. Uh, talagang uh, maraming nag address na nahihirapan pero kailangan natin uh, talaga pong uh, itry no sabi nga kung gusto may paraan kung ayaw may dahilan at the same time po uh, always uh, remember uh, sabi nga ni ma'am paano yung mga walang internet babalik tayo dun sa MP1 MP2 MP3 Manila Paper 1 Manila Paper 2 Manila Paper 3 doon naman tayo nag-start no pero always remember binigay yung technology technology na yan, to utilize it, not only for the typical learners, but also most especially to our learners with disabilities. So thank you very much. Thank you guys. Um, very insightful. Now, kanina, I think Sir Ryan mentioned how, pare, kasi para tong partnership, eh, di ba? 
parents and teachers. So, and I know that right now, a lot of parents are also watching us in Facebook. So, um, para naman po sa mga magulang, ano ba yung mga pwede pa nilang gawin para suportahan yung mga anak nila pag nararamdaman nila na yung anak nila ha, ay nahihirapan sa pagsulat at pagbasa? Siguro, we can start kay... Sir Ryan, since ikaw naman yung nag-start nung, ano, no, sa, sa inyo ko kinuha yung question. Sounds good. Yes. Um, the pandemic, I think, helped our parents realize more about their active role sa education ng kanilang mga anak. Yung minsan nga, mas nasobrahan pa yung pressure um, na, na, na nalagay sa kanila um, during this pandemic. And I, I really would not, I'm not a parent, no? But I would not expect parents to have all the information at hand um, to, to equip their students. What they need is a strong support system. And a strong support system that they can come to. And it can be in a form of a community where, you know, um, in a specific division, organized sila. Kasi we cannot just leave the community building to the parents na, ah, alam nyo na yan ng mga parents, kayo na bahala mag-organize sa sarili. You need just stop organizing. We really need to build that community first until they become autonomous na uh, maging automatic na yung support system sa kanila. And second, it's like a help desk. A help desk that they can come to that is readily accessible to them. And it can be, you know, a knowledge base na a chatbot sa messenger that they message um, DepEd, um, special education. And then there's like have an option na, okay, these are the things that they're struggling with. And these are quick links um, that, that they can review na, okay, five-minute YouTube video um, that will give them specific instructions on this. It is... Very simple, um, and but it is very doable, and it will not overwhelm the parents at the same time. I like the I like the idea. Yes, sir. Nick, are you going to say something? Uh, siguro po, ma'am, uh, regarding that matter on the uh, side ng parents, tama po, no? Kaya nga po, they are considered as our uh, co-learning uh, facilitator. Eh. So, teacher and uh, our teachers or SPED teachers or receiving teachers really extend assistance to our parents. Tama po si Sir Ryan. Uh, paano naman yung talagang sabi nating hirap? But we need to do something. At ang, uh, ang gagawin po natin is to give them uh, yung pangangailangan nila uh, in terms of possible may teacher na na-assign doon. Kaya lang syempre ina-observe pa rin natin yung mga IATF protocols na yan due to the uh, uh, ano ng ating, uh, uh, ng ating uh, government. But always remember, hindi tayo mag stop uh, Like in our division, uh, tama po sa Ryan yung help desk. Meron po tayong mga division offices na may contacts, no? Yung uh, parents sa uh, mismong teacher. Uh, para ma talagang 24-7 na nakabukasyon para po to extend assistance to our parents po. So, uh, in-extrengthen at kami rin po ay merong video, short video na ginawa how our parents, uh, role ng parents para dito sa time na ma-assist yung ating mga learners with disabilities. So, salamat po. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reina. You're raising your hand. Yes. Um, in What we tell our parents uh, dito sa Philippine Dyslexia Foundation always is to engage their children in reading. So, when we say engage, it's not just giving them the book, but actually collaborate it, collaborative reading ang gagawin because the more exposure that the kids have in reading, the more they hear it, the more they see it, the more they enjoy it, the better are their the chances of improving their literacy skills. Um, so having, I agree with you having a help desk because that's definitely Definitely something that will, you know, quickly help the, the parent not overwhelmed, perhaps. Um, but it's also um, um, coping skills that will allow them to, yes, challenge their skills, but also have improvements along the way. So more than more than giving them the solution, it's really helping them um, learn the strategy.
that's actually a very good point, um, Ms. Reina. Gusto ko yung hindi mo lang binigay yung libro. Um, yes, Teacher Hazel. I also wanted to mention something about writing too kasi nane-neglect yung writing. <laughs> and I think parang nakikita nga natin doon sa mga essays ng secondary level students natin, di ba? How limited minsan yung mga entries nila. So, I think that it's something that is developed over time. So, tama si Teacher Maki na we need to engage them in reading um, and read with them kung kaya. But we also need to find occasion for them to write, write to someone, di ba? Lalo na, um, they have so much time um, to try and hone their writing skills. So, write letters, write summaries, write, write stories, di ba? Even draw pictures alongside their stories, uh, write opinion pieces. Parang, I think it's important to strike a balance kasi writing has always been neglected through the decades. So, I think that bago tayo mahuli ng sobra-sobra sa pagsulat, dapat meron din tayo, for now, grocery lists lang muna, di ba? Or ano, descriptions of photographs, di ba? Yung iba nga nagtatype nga sa Facebook account ng mommy nila or daddy nila, na sila na yung nagtatype ng descriptions, eh, we need to go with the times, di ba? So, okay din naman mag-text-text ng lola, di ba? <laughs> Para lang matuto rin ng encoding aside from decoding. It's a two-way system, di ba? Thank you, Teacher Hazel. Thank you, Teacher Mackie. Thank you, Sir Nick, Sir Ryan, Ms. Emel. This has been a very fruitful discussion. Kaya lang, I think we are running out of time. Um, so, thank you so much for your insight. Um, and I'm so happy to be part of this panel. So that's it. Thank you, guys. I'm going to turn you back over to our host. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to the members of the live panel discussion for a very fruitful, interactive, and informative session. Through your interaction with one another, the questions and concerns relevant to the context and needs of learners with difficulty in reading and writing have been addressed and clarified. And once again, thank you so much to all of you. Shout out again to to our live viewers in our Deped Philippines Facebook page. Hello to all of you there. Are you ready for another Mentimeter game? But before we start, let me announce the winners of the part one of our Mentimeter game. These are the top four winners. First place is John Timothy Alberto. Second is Alice Yumang. Third is Jeannie Lumapak. Fourth is Naomi Agda. Congratulations. And now we are going to play another round of Mentimeter game. So to join, you have to bring out your phones and laptops and go to menti.com and use the code 36520599. Again, go to menti.com and use the code. 36520599. Kindly type in your full name once you register to the game for us to count your participation. 
And while you do that, please do stay with us because we will have a few announcements later on. And we will also be flashing an evaluation form link for you to answer. We would love to hear your thoughts regarding your experience in this event and know what our next step should be to make these kinds of events more memorable. Let me just check how many participants we have now. Again, go to menti.com and use the code 36520599. Let us wait for the players. All right, we are flooded with 70 players right now. Keep joining. Use the code 36520599. Prizes are at stake for this Mentimeter game. All right, so I think we have quite a number of players who are ready to win some prizes. Top two players who answered correctly and the fastest will be declared as winners. Let's start. First question. Using this learning tool, students can conquer the blank page using the power of their voice. Is it syllabicate, dictate, or read? 14 seconds to answer. Five seconds. And the time is up. The correct answer is dictate. Wow, most of you got the correct answer. Let us proceed to the second question. This learning tool that is available in OneNote helps you to solve any math problem by displaying a step-by-step -step instruction. Is it math assistant, problem solver, or math solution? If you listen to the sessions, you can quickly answer these questions. Time is up and the correct answer is Math assistant, wow. Majority got the correct answer as well. Okay, congratulations to our winners. And do note that the one that is flashed on your screens is the participant who answered the fastest. But we will consider another player who excelled in this game as we will have a total of two winners for this round. I am seeing here a name, Sarah Joy Makasakit. I will announce later the top the second uh, winner. And to our Mentimeter winners, kindly email us the following detail details. You have to uh, send your name, school and school address, and your region, your contact number, plus the screenshot of the name you used during the game. I have here the name of the top two, Avon Estudillo. All right, let me repeat. The winners are Sara Makasakit and Avon Estudillo. Again, send the following information that is being flashed on your screens to this email address, nicanor.sangabriel.deped.gov.ph. Again, the email address is nicanor.sangabriel.deped.gov.ph. Kindly wait for an email regarding the delivery of your prices. Once again, congratulations to all our Mentimeter winners for today. All right, I hope everyone enjoyed our game. Watch out for more fun talks and discussions as we close off our five-day productive event. 
And as we inch closer towards the end of the program, here to give his closing message, let us listen to Mr. Rene Tablante, Technology Sales Head of Microsoft Philippines. Let us give him a virtual round of applause. Good morning to all the teachers, parents, and learners who tuned in. We hope today's inclusion and accessibility track on learners with difficulty in reading and writing further supplemented our understanding of our children and how we can best empower them through education. On behalf of Microsoft Philippines, I would like to express my sincerest gratitude to today's speakers. Dr. Jose Tuginayo Jr. of the Student Inclusion Division, Teacher Hazel Priclaro Ontenko of the University of the Philippines College of Education, Ms. Reina Makalinao Pante of the Philippine Dyslexia Foundation, and of course, everyone at DepEd and the Microsoft Teams who made this event possible. We hope that the partnership between Department of Education and Microsoft strengthens as we aim to empower teachers and learners around the Philippines. Beyond products and solutions, we aim to accelerate opportunities for teachers and parents by providing training and resources that promote independent and self-sufficient learning that caters to the needs of every person. So once again, from the bottom of our hearts, we thank our audience and everyone who ensured the success of this event. Thank you so much, Sir Rene, for that message. We appreciate your time, effort, and resources extended for ensuring the attainment of this event's goal. So this wraps up our episode today. Thank you so much for the special participation of BLD Director 4, Leila P. Ariola, BLD Director 3, Lito A. Palomar, SID Chief, Jose Toginayo Jr., our partner, Microsoft Philippines, Philippine Dyslexia Foundation, University of the Philippines College of Education, Line Learning and Development Solutions, Virtual Lahan, our resource persons, Teacher Mackey, Teacher Hazel, and Miss Imelda, and to DepEd officials from central and field offices, instructional leaders, school heads, teachers, learners, parents, guardians, learning facilitators, and other stakeholders. Again, Thank you all for joining us in this significant event. Just a few reminders before we sign off. We'd like to invite you to join us virtually again tomorrow from 9 to 11 o'clock a.m. via Microsoft Teams and DepEd Philippines Facebook page. For the last episode of the celebration of DepEd's Inclusion and Accessibility Week. Just another reminder to our teachers and learners, you can install and activate your Microsoft 365 account by following these steps. Kindly talk to your school admin or division ICT coordinator on how you can get your Microsoft account. Once you have your account, kindly log into office.com and remember to change your password and confirm it. For added security, kindly register your mobile number or email address you also have the option to add some security questions. And once done, kindly confirm your settings so you can use and explore your free Microsoft 365 account. For a more detailed explanation, let us all watch this video. Pumunta sa office.com at mag-login gamit ang Microsoft account na binigay sa atin ng DepEd. I-type natin ang ating email and then ang temporary password. Sa mga first time logins, kailangan natin palitan ng ating temporary password. So, makikita natin itong dialog box na ito. So, make sure na palitan natin ito to our original and a more secure password.
once done, kailangan natin isecure ang ating account. Now, normally, hihingan tayo ng phone, authentication, ng email, or maglalagay tayo ng security questions. Kailangan natin i-fulfill ang isa sa mga ito. For this example, try natin i-authenticate ang phone para mag-secure ang ating account. So, piliin natin yung country, which in this case, the Philippines, and i-type natin ang ating registered mobile number. Dito sa registered mobile number, pwedeng i-text sa atin or itawag sa atin ang verification code. Kapag natanggap natin ang verification code, ita-type natin sa field sa ibaba. And there you go. Now, meron tayong access sa portal. Now, dito sa portal, may kita natin lahat ng benefits and lahat ng apps na pwede nating i-download. We can click on Install Office para mag-download lahat ng ito and magamit na natin sila. For accessible resources, links, and related online trainings from DepEd and Microsoft Philippines, kindly refer to the links that are being flashed on your screens. We have links for the following. Resources and accessibility for remote learning, https colon double slash aka dot ms slash special ed resources. For accessibility guide for educators and parents, https colon slash double slash aka.ms slash educators guide accessibility. For accessibility guide for vision, hearing, mobility, speech, and learning, we have https colon double slash aka.ms slash msft accessibility guide. And for other related trainings from Microsoft and DepEd, https colon double slash aka.ms slash Access Fundamentals Training. We also have an evaluation form for you to answer. We would love to hear your thoughts and suggestions regarding this event. You may access the form by going to this link, https colon double slash tinyurl.com slash 2022 inclusion dash access week dash eval. Again, don't forget to use our official hashtag, hashtag DepEd Inclusion and Accessibility when you post your photos relevant to this event on your social media account. Once again, on behalf of the Department of Education, we sincerely thank all of you for sharing your time and enthusiasm. It is our earnest desire to always support our learners, our educators, our parents, and learning facilitators, especially during this challenging time. Let us all work together to make our vision into reality, and that is to make education inclusive and accessible for all basic education learners, most especially for those in special circumstances. A blessed morning, everyone. See you again online tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. here in DepEd Philippines Facebook page as we will cap off the celebration of DepEd's Inclusion and Accessibility Week.